Did you know that you can literally copy any site from the internet into Framer with just a couple of clicks? Let's say you have a WordPress or Webflow website, but you want to make the switch to Framer and take these websites to the next level. In this video, I'm going to show you the most efficient way of transferring these websites to Framer. My name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. Okay, so this is going to be really, really quick. First of all, we're gonna to go to the Chrome Web Store and we're gonna search for HTML2 Framer. Then we're gonna click this one and then we're just gonna simply click Add to Chrome. I'm using Arc, so it prompts me to like add this HTML2 Framer extension to Arc. So I'm gonna click Add Extension. And then we basically have the extension now in our browser and we can either get it from the top bar if you're using like Chrome, Google Chrome, or if you're using Arc, you can get your extensions on the left panel. If you click here, you can see that Framer is now sitting right here. So now we can just simply go to a website that we want to copy. In this case, uh, you know, maybe we have this website. You know, this extension was created to copy your own websites to Framer and, you know, transfer them to Framer. So you don't really use it to like just steal others work. So keep this in mind when you're using it. But yeah, so here we have our website and we can just simply go to this left sidebar since we're using Arc and we can just activate the extension itself. And now you're gonna see that you can just simply select any layer to copy. And what I can also do is I can press down shift on my keyboard to copy multiple layers. So maybe I press down shift, click here, and then I click here as well, here and here. So now I copied all of these elements. I go to Framer and just simply press Command and V. And now as you can see, we have our website inside of Framer, which is very cool. We didn't have to recreate everything. We didn't have to recreate the styling of these elements. Everything is right here for us and we can start working with it. We can also just copy this little image here. We can paste it into our website. And then we have these logos as well. I'm gonna also copy that and paste it into Framer. As you can see the, yeah, okay. I thought that the colors will be slightly different, but they are nicely matching. And then we can grab the nav bar as well. By the way, if you are not able to select certain elements, you can also press escape on your keyboard and then it will start selecting one of their parents. Uh, so yeah, but here, this navbar works really nice. It's selecting the navbar. I can click to copy, come to Framer, and just paste it within our desktop breakpoint. And as you can see, it's right here on the top of the website. And yeah, we can now start working with this. What you'll notice though is that here, if we start resizing this website, it will you know, not be really responsive. So we still have to do some work with it. And also we have um, you know, double the buttons. So we can just quickly delete one. And, uh, and yeah, but honestly, it's not that much of work to like make something like this responsive really quickly. So for example, I can just pin this navbar to the right as well. And now it will nicely adapt to different screen size changes. However, within these frames should also uh, you know be relatively positioned so for example i turn this navigation into a layout in the right panel and then i just simply group these elements so for example these two will be in a stack so option command and enter will be pressed then i hit shift a to set the stack to fit content with and fit content height and then i group these links here as well with the same shortcut I increase their gap slightly and then I can just set this navbar to space between and I can add some padding on the left and on the right. And now we can see that it's nicely responsive as I resize the side. We still have more buttons than what we need. So I'm gonna delete one more. Hopefully it's, it, we still have more buttons than what we need. I don't know where these buttons are coming from, but yeah, I'm just gonna keep deleting them until, okay. So now we just have two buttons, pretty cool. So for the rest of the site, we can we can continue optimizing really easily. As you can see, the theme here is just to make sure that everything is relatively positioned. I mean, most of the layers and then, you know, these responsive setups are nicely set up. Uh, it's also important that in the description, I'm going to have a dedicated tutorial where I explain 
how to structure your website, how to set it up in a way that it will be responsive. So if it's a little bit too fast for you here or you want to dig a little bit deeper, you can check that video. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to just turn this talk part into like a group. So I'm going to just select all of these layers that I want within the group. And then I'm going to press Option, Command and Enter on my keyboard. And now you can see that for some reason we have just these duplicates. I don't know, I, maybe I just pasted them in multiple times, I don't remember. Uh, but basically, yeah, then now these are within the stack, I can increase the gap between them. And then what I can also do is I can turn this whole desktop breakpoint into a layout. So all of these layers within will be relatively positioned. I forgot to do it at the start, so now I'm going to do it. So now everything looks much better. I can increase the, the gap here and then I can also set these text layers to with fill and then I'm going to set the alignment to the uh, center. I can apply some max width so they're not so you know, wide. So let's just bring them to a little bit smaller size and let's take a look at these buttons. We can also turn these into a layout. The buttons themselves can also be uh, layouts or stacks and then this image will be set to fill so it fills up available space and then this is also gonna be fill I'm gonna just make sure that our desktop breakpoint is fit content so it fits the content we're placing within and then you know these logos should also be placed relatively here because now they're absolutely positioned we can move them around anywhere but it's not really responsive so let's turn it into a stack on the right panel Increase the gap between these and maybe apply wrapping so on smaller breakpoints. Uh, when we add more breakpoints, we haven't added them yet, so when we will have more breakpoints, it will nicely break into multiple lines when they don't have enough space to fit within the stack. I'm going to also set it to fit content height and apply some top, bottom and left right padding here. And basically, as you can see, I just made some quick changes and my site will be pretty much ready. I'll just set it to a little bit smaller width, maybe here on the desktop breakpoint, 1200. And then I'm gonna add the tablet and the phone breakpoint. And now I'll see if we need to, you know, change anything else on these breakpoints. So for example, I think tablet looks quite okay, but here we definitely need to do some optimization. So for example, left and right pin can be applied. This can be a little bit smaller, maybe uh, 46. We can decrease the letter spacing, maybe the line height as well. I maybe want to make it even smaller. Yeah, something like this looks better. Then these buttons here will be placed right below each other. So the direction will be set to vertical. Feed content will be applied and I think I'll set this frame to fill width. And then the buttons within will also get this nice fill width. So yeah, it now looks very good on mobile here. As you can see, as I said, because of the wrapping, these logos are nicely breaking into multiple lines. If we don't have wrapping, if it's set to you no, know, as you can see, they are just overflowing this and going to the um, to to like outside of the frame itself. So that wrapping is really really useful for us. Um, okay, now I think all we have to do is somehow like optimize this nav bar. Again, I'm not sure if I want to go into details of how I do that inside of Framer. We can just press I on our keyboard, go to the insert panel. Here at navigation, we can drag and drop this pre-built component. It will be much easier if we add our elements into this because it already has the optimization for phone, as you can see right here with a little hamburger menu. So, you know, you might do this or I also have a tutorial for creating responsive navigation bars from scratch. I'm going to also have that in the description. So if you want to dig a little bit deeper into that, you can also watch that video. But now I'm going to just replace this, what we have with this navigation that I just uh, pasted into the canvas. And I'm going to move it to the top and then I'll just grab it, move it inside of the navigation. I'm going to double click into the navigation and I'm going to paste it here so we can copy everything. So for example, this can be placed right here. The background color can be also copied. And as you can see in Framer, it's really easy, um, you know, to create these different styles, different designs, because it's literally just drawing rectangles on the canvas and then optimizing it or changing its styling on the right panel. So 
So yeah, it's nothing really complicated. Um, I'm going to apply some left and right padding and um, I'm going to have this stack as well pasted into the uh, instead of the links. Uh, and then I think I'm going to set it to space between and then hopefully, yeah, we, we have to do some optimization here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, I think I know what is happening. So because we just replaced the Framer logo with our logo, uh, we kind of removed the really important part of the, of the navigation, which is this icon, which was hidden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply copy the logo, paste it within here, and then I'm going to paste in the text too. And so we basically keep the parts that we need. I'm going to just, uh, maybe I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Okay, so I think this is going to be great. And then again, I'm going to just quickly paste in the fill color. And then again, the links. So paste it in here. And then set this to space between so the links are at the end and now as you can see it's much better what we need to do is we need to make sure that these are actually placed right below each other so on the phone and phone open variants we're going to select that uh, stack which is this one and then we're going to set it to vertical direction or we might you know give it a little bit more gap and maybe some top padding and basically I think that's it. Now we have it optimized and uh, we can just set it to fill. I think we need some space here on the left, so, or sorry, on the right. So I'm gonna apply that with paddings. And then I'm gonna remove the padding right here because we're not gonna need that anymore. And one more thing, just select this stack here and here and apply some bottom padding as well. So, yeah, basically that's it. I'm just gonna have to replace this navigation or just change its uh, variant to phone. And now it is nicely gonna have this interaction. When we click the hamburger menu or this little icon, it's going to nicely open down. And yeah, it looks really great. However, it's pushing the content down a little bit on open. It's because we have not set it to fixed positioning. So it's, you know, outside of the whole flow of the website. So it's not pushing anything else. So I'm going to set it to fixed and I'm going to pin it to all sides. And to make sure that these are not going too much to the top, I'm going to set some top padding on this whole desktop breakpoint, pushing this content to, to the bottom a little bit. So now, as you can see, I can just click this it will be nicely overlapping this content here. You know, our background color here on the navigation is not that strong, so we might wanna increase that a little bit or even set a solid color. So when it's placed above everything or positioned above everything we'd see in Dex 10, uh, we can make sure that, you know, nothing will be visible underneath it and we can nicely read the navigation itself. And yeah, basically this extension can be also used to copy elements from other websites that you might not own just to see how they are structured or, you know, just to, you know, experiment with them a little bit. So for example, here we are on the WordPress website, we can launch the Framer to, sorry, HTML to Framer extension. And then we can maybe just try to copy this layout right here that we see and we can just paste it into Framer and you know, we can just start you know, experimenting with it a little bit and see how it's built. Of course, now it's not gonna really show on the black background, but now you can see that we just literally copy and paste it into Framer. Uh, just make sure that you're not stealing anything or you know, if you're copying someone else's work, you're not saying that that work is actually yours. You know, but for practicing and, and just learning Framer, I think it's pretty like fun tool to, to play around with. Also, one thing to mention here is that you can actually go inside of any of your Framer projects. So for example, here's what we copied previously. If you go into the settings on the top right, we can, we can just opt out of the HTML to Framer Chrome extension. So if I save these settings and then I republish the website, what you're gonna see is that now the extension will no longer work 
on this website so if you are you know you, you can see that i cannot click it so if you are a template creator or something like that you don't really have to worry that people will copy your copy your designs because you can literally just opt out of the of the extension so yeah feel free to do that if you feel like so as you can see inside of framer if we use the HTML to framer chrome extension it is super easy and super effortless to just copy our old or ex or the existing websites that we created with maybe wordpress or webflow into framer and finally take them to the next level so yeah i think that's it for this video make sure to go to framer.university i have a bunch of other like tutorials and resources that you can use if you want to learn more about framer and also i'll put in the description that video about the you know responsive page stru structure and you know a video about how you can actually use this relative and absolute positioning that i was you know briefly mentioning in this video and then also put a video about uh, creating a responsive navigation bar into the description so feel free to watch them those as well and yeah like this video subscribe for more and i'm going to see you in the next one